Nós estamos aqui com o Matteo Gori, ele é o um, vice president, I guess, vice president for the Cutina Barilla, que é o grupo de inovação dentro do grupo Barilla. E ele deu uma palestra maravilhosa e eu vou perguntar para ele algumas coisas a respeito de como é que é esse negócio. Okay, Matthew, uh, thank you so much for this uh, interview. Okay. And uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, why did you choose Italy as the head start for the Cucina Barilla business? Such a difficult, I guess, market, a very traditional and at some points conservative with its very um, preoccupied with its food. Right. Why Italy? Okay. Well, you're right. I mean, uh, it was a decision that seemed kind of counterintuitive because Italy has a lot of traditions. Italy is not very open to e-commerce. And you remember that Cucina Barilla has, is built as a business model on e-commerce. But uh, we did a few things combined. First of all, we ran some market research. So we developed the concept and we tested it not only in Italy but in other countries. And Strangely enough, we found that in Italy, the potential for that concept was a bit stronger, a bit bigger than in other countries. And, and why is that? It's for a number of reasons. First of all, because Barilla as a brand is stronger in Italy, and it's not only pasta, uh, so it's more about food in general, and Cucina Barilla is not just pasta, it's food in general. Then we probably realized that um, this smart convenience trend is probably not very well uh, captured in Italy, maybe it's a bit more captured, the space is already occupied somewhere else a bit more. And then of course we had the final decision which is more the managerial side of it, which is when you try something so disruptive and so far away from your core business, you should try it at home first. Uh, I mean, big, great companies try things in their courtyard before yeah. bringing it somewhere else. And we did that because our commercial presence is stronger, our headquarters is there, we could uh, make sure that everything was taken care of. which with a much stronger presence than in other countries. But of course, we developed it in a way that is possible to internationally roll out uh, very easily. So partnership with Whirlpool, uh, a, a global brand. Partnership with the e-commerce provider, a global brand. Even our uh, courier is DHL, it's a global brand. So we try to choose things that make, will make our life easy the day that we decide to bring it out, uh, somewhere else. I was wondering if fail fast was part of the decision. Because if you have a difficult market and then you can see what parts of the business are not go doing so well or as expected in a more difficult market than, than in a more, uh, I guess, uh, open market to those kind of innovations? It's, it, there is probably that too, um, and there's also the fact that Cucina Barilla, as Barilla in general, is about Italian food. So some markets seem potentially interesting for a concept like Cucina Barilla, but then uh, might have a limitation with the, due to the fact that it's mostly Italian food, only Italian food. So in some other countries you see Italian food as ethnic food, and therefore it wouldn't be so easy. Um, but I agree with you, I mean, we also wanted the hardest test uh, to make sure that if we pass that, then other countries and other cities could, to a certain extent, be easier. Okay. Second question is about the 3D pasta printing. Right. Right. It's very exciting to see that Barilla is going to this market. We know that we have uh, companies from the uh, Candies. Uh, doing that and then I was really it was really nice to see that Barilla got into and uh, I understand that it was a Dutch company that helped Barilla also to do that printing machine and uh, is Cucina Barilla involved in, on that whatsoever or not how is that handled okay so uh, let's say that Cucina Barilla and the pasta the 3d printing pasta uh, came out from the same sort of team and from the same sort of spirit so Yesterday, during the presentation, I described this innovation team which was set up, let's say, halfway between pure R&D and pure business, right in the middle of that. And these two ideas probably came out of that same area. Um, then they are following different trends. So 3D printing pasta is about personalization, uh, while Cucina Barilla is about smart convenience, is about automatic cooking. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think there are two examples of, of the fact that Barilla, which has a pretty big business and is very good at doing its core business is also trying very disruptive innovation and trying to put some seeds on things that maybe one day will be uh, big and new businesses and new business legs.
if you could leave a message for these researchers that are working with R&D. Maybe they are frustrated because they are working for not so much for innovation, but how can they impact their own companies to become more creative and more innovative on their own paths, careers and paths? Okay. Well, um, going back to the Cucina Barilla example and, and building on that, I think it was very important uh, that uh, Barilla set up this innovation team, which was, let's say, a marketing and business people uh, interfacing pure R&D people. Uh, with a sort of very long-term goal and very disruptive uh, innovation ambition. So I think it, it's very important for R&D people to get in touch with these, these stakeholders, sometimes even informally, and make sure that there is that positive dialogue between pure research and business, but of course uh, business which has some lenses on the long term. Um, and then the other thing that I would recommend is uh, try to go for uh, some small and quick wins. I mean, uh, you can design a great ambition which would take years to come or big investments by the company and then you can try and gain some traction, some positive feelings, some positive uh, momentum with some quick wins. And it was very important for instance on Cucina Barilla that we started very, very small. We tried to highlight, I mean, the initial idea was of a bread maker, of a special bread maker and a cool system on bread making. And then we started developing recipes for that. And then we realized we could be doing something a bit more, and then a bit more, and then a bit more. We didn't start with the, I'm going to build a uh, 100 million euro business, uh, and this is what I'm going to do. So start more, and as I said yesterday, I think this applies to R&D people, but applies to everybody in business these days, uh, the Alvin Toffler quotation. So be ready to learn and learn and relearn. I mean, when you're going for a completely unknown path, uh, there's no playbook. So you gotta be very, very agile and always adjust to what customers and consumers are telling you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank this you. is such a good piece of advice. And uh, we in Brazil are willing and are hoping that Cucina Barilla arrives in Brazil as well. Okay, okay. fingers crossed. Okay, good.